It's a platform 120 feet tall just for dropping stuff. This is a motorized steel barrel just for strapping down a car and turning it upside down. I'm not sure what this one's for, but I'm pretty sure I could come up with something cool to do with it. Where am I? I'm in Arizona in the middle of 150 acres of pure awesome. This is pretty much what I would design as my ideal playground. It's a test facility designed to break things, smash things, make them fail, and analyze the aftermath. This is one of the test facilities owned by Exponent Systems, and today they're gonna help us smash some cars. And first up to feel the crash force is this. So this is our car. This is our car. We're gonna smash it at 50 miles an hour into a wall. <laughs> well, let's get started. All right. How's all this gonna go down? This is a 1,280 foot long crash rail. It has a track embedded in it and a cable that pulls a car along that track towards the impact spot. These two V8 engines, which have about 800 horsepower between them, pull this cable, which pulls the car up to the desired speed. When the car gets to about here, the cable's gonna release it, so it's traveling only under its own momentum, right into this big steel thing. It's at this point that we'll have a complete picture of what happens to a car when it's going 50 miles an hour and comes to a dead stop by crashing into a wall. It's not just a picture they'll be getting. Jamie has also added some high-tech trickery to capture the force facts. There we go. Inside the car underneath the back seat is mounted a block of accelerometers that measure deceleration of the impact in three separate axes of movement. That information is sent back to a data logger that's mounted in the back of the car. It records all that information. It's kind of like a black box. Just like in the small scale test, they'll gather the stats for a 50 mile per hour wall crash, a 100 mile per hour wall crash, and then finally, a 50 mile per hour head on collision. This crash, it's basically a data point, one of two that we will obtain in order to correctly analyze our head on collision. Careful viewers will note that in the full scale, we're following the same experimental procedure as we did with our hammers and clay. We think it has a nice symmetry. Shall we log the pre-crash length? Sure. 15 feet. All right, then. All right, the cable's ready. Come on in. With the length logged and the black box engaged, the car is ready to meet its fate slamming into a solid steel wall at 50 miles per hour. All right, this is one car into one wall at 50 miles an hour. Take it away. Okay, Bob, we're ready for off. The V8 engines roar as they spin the cable. And the car gains speed till it's holding at precisely 50 miles per hour. And then plows headlong into a wall of steel. <laughs> Oops. I hope they're insured. Yep, it's a car crash, I think. Yeah. I'd say what happened here is this car here hit this wall. There. It's a spectacular smash. The force of the impact crunched the front of the car like a, uh, like a car hitting a steel wall at 50 miles per hour, leaving it three and a half feet shorter. 11 feet, seven inches. But of course, that's not the only impact stat. What say we find out what the G-load was? These guys are downloading the data about the crash right now. OK, here's the stat from that crash. This car hit that wall at 50.7 miles per hour and took an average of 58 Gs in the longitudinal direction. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that when we smash a car into this wall at 100 miles an hour, the G-load is going to be significantly higher. 